My name is Allie Williams, also known as Only Alley Cat. I'm a cosplayer, a business owner of a princess party company in Los Angeles, and an actress. And I am Steve Davey, otherwise known as Steve Three, or otherwise known as Shit's Back or Muppet Fart. Uh, by day, I earn a living being a, uh, a technical specialist, giving support to technicians in the automation trade uh, out there across North America. And then when I'm not working, I am very busy in trying to build costumes, trying to build props, trying to collect toys, trying to buy toys, enjoying nerd stuff pretty much every hour I can squeeze in. Now, it's it's the costumes and the props that brought you two together. And this is still like I this is my favorite story when it comes to conventions <laughs> and when it comes to cosplay. Uh, you guys met each other just happened by happenstance uh, in my ho- current hometown of Prince George, British Columbia. Ali, you're from L.A. and Steve, I think you were in Vancouver at the time. Vancouver, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ali, h- how did you get invited to Northern FanCon, first of all? It was actually through Lane. Lane had won the cosplay contest the year before. Right. Given a short list of recommended cosplayers to the coordinator. And then that got out to what eventually became my manager for cosplay for a hot second. But I didn't know those were a thing. <laughs> the guy slipped into my DMs to try to say he was a manager and wanted to, like, take me to this convention in the middle of Canada. And as much as it seemed like the setup to a horror, like, a, a, a <laughs> scary movie, like, <laughs> everything seemed like it all checked out. I did my research. Everything seemed fine. And then before I knew it, I was on a plane to Canada and in the lobby of a convention and flirting with a cute British guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, d- I, did, I didn't even have time to check into the hotel. Just, what do you do? What do you do? <laughs> Wait a minute. Steve, you were invited to uh, Northern FanCon because you were a part of the 501, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The 501st were up there. They've been doing it, I think, since it started up there at Prince George. And it's such a fun convention to go to. It seems crazy that in the middle of Prince George, in what, two hockey rinks, you're going to get a great convention. But I think they blew it out of the park the first year with William Shatner. And then they just had some pretty cool guests. Yeah. Um, but it's the environment. It's the people. It's, it's such a fun convention. And if you're in BC, you've got to go up to Northern Fancon. And if you're going to go to Northern Fancon, you've got to stay in that hotel. I can't remember which hotel it was, but... You've got to stay there just because of the bathrooms. <laughs> yeah, no, you're talking about the Ramada. <laughs> yeah, you've got to stay there just for the Ramada. That thing alone is worth going to this convention for. It's and staying there with your good buddy to see who gets caught by the uh, the phantom misting windows of the bathroom. It's Are they taking cool. a shower or taking a... <laughs> Like, uh, number two yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's but it's pretty it's, odd that i could i could identify the hotel just by you mentioning the bathroom the ramada yeah I, the, something yeah. else i don't know who i don't know who came up with that idea but to have a misting window on a, a sliding door not even a latched door but no. a sliding door yeah like oh man we've had some funny stories in that hotel some funny stories definitely not a hotel room to share no <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, it, it's very it, private. It's it's yeah. it's it's not it's not a business trip hotel where it's like you and a coworker. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's all it was for us was going up there with somebody else that was part of the group because yeah. you shared a room to save money, right? So. Yeah. 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 So it, it just and that's that's how you two met, and I love the fact yeah. that it it has gotten you to this point. You're happily married. You got married on on what? We got married. We got married uh, a month before COVID, and uh, in down in Disneyland, down in uh, Batu, we yeah. actually rode on the Smuggler's Run um, with four of our friends. One of them was an all day minister, and he married us during the course of flying the Smuggler's Run ride in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. So that is is something never to be forgotten, yeah. always to be enjoyed, and. Uh, just an absolute landmark of a, an occasion. But for us, it was just a bit of fun that we were going to do. And then we would celebrate with our family 
because we've got family across you know the world i guess is an extravagant way of saying it but mm. i got family you know family in uk family in italy family you got family in florida we've got family in, in vancouver where i've lived for the last you know last 18 years yeah so we were going to go and celebrate with a couple of but then covid hit yeah and we were still in two different countries so we had pretty much two years of not being able to move forward with life yeah uh, because of that bullshit so yeah no it's 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 unfortunate but i mean you you two have done so incredibly well for yourselves and each other over these past couple of years, even during those two years where it was just everything ground to a halt. Ali, how long oh, yeah. have you been in this uh, cosplay uh, birthday party, princess party world? Um, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I believe it was 2014. Yeah, 2014 is when I started my business, mm. and I believe I started cosplaying the year after, if not like a year and a half or something like that, so a year or two after, so 2015, 2016 being conservative, what was that, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, Math. 23, 28 years, going up on eight years. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> <laughs> Wild. Well, you've yeah. also, you've, you've, uh, you're an actress as well. And uh, yes. you've, you've had a handful of roles. And uh, I, I, I do remember watching your demo reel and you play a horrific zombie. <laughs> if you've, done, you've done another one this year, though. You I've did, got another one coming yeah. up. Yeah. She did a, did a photo shoot with the, uh, the deceased. It was DC characters all zombified. Yeah. That was incredible. Oh, cool. Halloween really last year. That was a really, really fun photo shoot. Yeah. And got some cool videos out of it. I did my own makeup, which was really fun. And doing like peeling skin and doing a zombie walk and run yeah. and attack. Yeah. And like, <laughs> it was super fun. But yeah, playing the zombies, just something else. I, I have fun with it, just getting into motivation behind why each little tick and each little move and what gets their attention and you know why they behave the way they do i think it's really fascinating and i have i have fun making those zombies come to life and i get to play a new character which i haven't been able to announce just yet but i did get cast in the independent feature that'll be announced later this month because that's another thing that came our way was when I moved down here, not only did I get greeted with COVID, we then had to, you know, get established here and in the land of, you know, the Hollywood, well, the Boulevard of Broken Dreams of Hollywood, right? And then the, the, the strike here. Yeah. So we've been dealing with the strike here as well, which has really, really hit everybody hard here. So yeah, it's definitely yeah. been some little uh, challenges, little hurdles. Um, yeah. Well, Ali, what what led you to start? uh cosplay and start with uh just creating your own business and and doing these uh, parties and birthday parties what started you that they're kind of a similar story so i started my business because i worked for a few other local companies and after working for disney for a few years and having just this high standard of what character performance should be mm. And then I went and I worked for other companies and I was like you're you're doing a fine job but i want to try and do it a little differently and no one else seems to be doing that and I didn't really always agree with the way they ran the business on top of it and so when there came an opportunity for me from somebody who wanted to book me directly they were like do I have to go through your boss or can I book you directly I said well I'd have to have my own stuff when's the party and they're like oh like in three months and I was like oh actually I can totally make a costume before then and so I looked into it and I was like, I can start my own business. Mm. I can do this. And I just went full in right away. And it was profitable after the first party. Wow. Just immediately. Yeah. So I haven't really looked back since. It continues to grow. I've got last year I had 25 independent contractors work for me throughout the year. Mm. It was really amazing. Record year every year. Just... Oh, I think it's really fun. It's really fun to like constantly have that creative outlet and to be a leader in my field and to help other performers find their confidence because I usually hire on really sweet, talented people who are like in the chorus, who have never been the star, who love connecting with kids. And then you 
give them that spotlight and they just shine and yeah. they get cast in so many big things after that. It's it's really cool. Like yeah. Mama Bear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're 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 the, you're the type of person who's willing to uh, look beyond the surface and give that person the opportunity to basically reveal themselves and show themselves and show their energy and their personality and and really, you know, grow as a performer. Exactly. Yeah, I've had some really beautiful success stories over the years and as heartbreaking as it is to have a really gifted performer who works all the time leave on a contract, um, I'm always excited for them too because I know I'm a stepping stone in that path. I just hope I'm for a couple years because I just like, stay, stay in the yeah. for as long as you can, please. You're really good. Yeah. I just had, what was it one last year, got hired to be a one woman show doing the yo yo shows at like kids' schools, and she travels around the country doing that. Wow. One woman show. It's wild. I'm like, did you know how to yo yo before? She's yeah. like, no. Who'd have thought that <laughs> yo yos were still that popular? They would tour schools. <laughs> yeah. you know? I, I have um, one who's currently going from tour to tour, traveling with Broadway, and another one who did a Broadway tour and came back. And then one who is right now working at Disneyland Paris. Wow. And yeah, it just, I don't know, I just have a method that works. And I really think it starts with taking care of the people who work for me. Mm. And that comes from my foundation of being in their shoes mm. and wanting a better company to work for. So. Awesome. Steve, you, you, you work in the technical trade. And um, yeah. like, what what led you to want to pursue this type of career? And also, like, clearly, when we get into the geekdom, like technical trade and the mechanics of things are very much influenced. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I got into the electronic side of the business world pretty much as soon as I came out of school, mm. um, and then just stuck with it, working for various different companies and. Uh, the company I work for currently, I've been associated with them for probably over 25 years. Um, and I just enjoy it. I enjoy doing what I do now rather than being out there and physically doing it because I get to really sit down and get into the nitty gritty of how these machines and robots work. Um, so yeah, I mean, that that's that's a, it's something that lets me want to get up and do my job in the morning. Right. But as soon as it's time to go, then it's on to the exciting stuff. <laughs> Um, so moving down here, I took on a different role of not being out and about and doing everything in Canada. I, you know, you know what space is like there. You have to travel for hours to get to places. So yeah, I don't really travel anymore now. And I love that. I, I'm just at home in a home office and surrounded by the things that uh, make me happy every single day. Um, and whenever I get five minutes, I can turn around and start the printers going or I can finish sanding down something or prep something for paint. Or Yeah, yeah I, it's, it's a good place to be. It's yeah. a good place to be. So the printing and the sanding and the prepping and stuff like that, it is it is the cosplay, it is the the uh, costume design, it is the love and the passion for Star Wars. I see the stormtrooper uh, over yeah, your shoulder that's, there. Yeah, that's, that's the you know that's the fire first aspect of it there with the trooper. But there's other things that we obviously build beyond that. Um, in COVID, really, it gave me the opportunity to delve deeply into the you know 3D modeling and printing. And learn enough about it so that you know we can now if we can't find something we can build it mm. or if something doesn't exist to purchase you can build it and that is so much more fun than tracing something down and paying someone some money for doing it so i enjoy the challenge i enjoy doing that definitely want to keep doing that and um, there's so much available to us now as builders and makers uh with these 3d printers it's absolutely incredible what they can do um so you just want to go faster and bigger um or even just faster sometimes so mm. Uh, just invest in that technology and the price points looking good but just the design work of it and doing the modeling work of it is is helped us out a few times for you, for you especially mm -hmm. valley gets a contract to do something that's very bespoke and not a character that everyone knows you, that stuff doesn't exist mm -hmm. but there's been times when i've been able to pull together parts of a costume some embellishments mm -hmm. some weaponry whatever it takes and just uh, design that hang it out paint it up and there it is it's 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 there so i love that 
Yeah, I, I love it. I, I don't. I don't mean to uh, uh, pigeonhole you, Ali, into like the princess thing because you rock the superhero <laughs> stuff incredibly well. <laughs> The, Again, the princess stuff works, right? <laughs> really. Yeah, yeah. It, that's the work side of it. That's it the is the work side, side of it, yeah. Well, I yeah. got into the cosplay world through my job. Mm. Um, I had a friend from Vancouver down visiting, and she was like, hey, um, yeah, I can help you with this volunteer gig because we dressed as Anna as Elsa and went to help at a shelter. And then she's like, hey, we're already dressed up. Do you want to like come with me to this convention? And I was more like, oh, scratch my back, scratch yours. Yeah, sure, whatever. Okay, I'll go. I, it's not something I'm into. Whatever. And so we went, and it was the last day of Long Beach Comic Con, like the last hour. We didn't even have to pay to get in. They like, nobody at the door. <laughs> we just like walked in, and everybody's dressed up, having a good time. All the vendors were so excited to see us. The kids were super cute. And I was like, this is fun. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, there's a cosplay contest too. I'm like, oh, sign me up. That's it. Like, when's the <laughs> next one? We're in. <laughs> like, awesome. So after that, that was it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the conventions, yeah, I don't know. We, 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 we started touring around conventions again mm -hmm. before COVID hit as well. And yeah. just saving the money to go out to a place that you've heard about a convention somewhere else and spending a whole weekend just living out of a hotel and wrecking the room full of clothing and makeup and just hairsprays and stuff. It was, it was so much fun. Yeah. Um, but the one, the one we always wanted to go to was Dragon Con and we got to go to that last year. And that just, that's a different world, man. It's, it's such a different world. It's, it's exciting. It's not all about mainstream and it's not all about you know, being mainstream characters. The fun of that, but it, there is some of that there and that's not putting it down, but mm -hmm. the fun part of Dragon Con is the bespoke, weird stuff like <laughs> the character from three episodes ago in a season of some show that's never haven't been on for 30 years and you see someone dressed you like i know that character, and then that's where the fun comes out so right. i think that's that's ignited a spark in me that i really want to go back there and pick some crazy unknown character and just wait till somebody recognizes it and if they don't they don't but that's such a somebody different does. convention it's just oh yeah there's like three hours of a day where no one's out partying it's yeah. absolutely crazy yeah. crazy from four to seven four a.m to seven a.m they have to clean the floors <laughs> and restock the bars <laughs> oh. jeez like, so yeah when, when it comes to like the big ones like i haven't had a chance to actually attend any of the massive cons yet it, dragon con is on the bucket list but i do get the sense of instead of it being the upper echelon and just that it's actually just a typical uh, convention, a, a gathering of fandom, but it's just turned yeah. up to 11 from both sides. You get the absolute amateur, the rookie, the ones who are yeah. just being introduced all the way up to the professional levels and beyond that yeah. are also having just as much fun at that same event. Yeah. And you, you kind of take, if you are somebody that's well known for doing it, you kind of go there with some an an anonymity, really, yeah. to be honest, because no one cares. <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if it's right. I don't know if it's the right thing to say, but no one cares. At yeah. Dragon Con, nobody cares. No. How many followers you, you don't have. care. It doesn't matter how much you pay for your costume. It doesn't matter how good quality the costume is. If it's fun, yeah, and it looks cool, it doesn't matter what it's made of or how it was made or how long it took to make. You have no, you're okay. having fun in it, and everyone loves that. And I think that's such a welcoming environment. Um, and I think that's something which I hadn't experienced until I went to. The Dragon Con. I not saying that conventions aren't welcoming, but there's a certain, you know, uh, stigma attached to some conventions. Yeah. I feel. Uh, yeah, it was definitely a, a, an eye opener. Yeah. But man, it's hard to get there. You know, it's one of those. If you went last <laughs> year and you had a hotel room, then you get a hotel room next year. Mm. But if you lose that hotel room, then you can't get another one. Now you can't go. Right. So. What is that called? Um, legacy. Yeah. Legacy room. Yeah, legacy room. So. Very, very for, for going once. Uh, once or more than once. If you book a room you in the certain hotels, like yeah. the Marriott and the Hilton, I believe, and maybe one other one, if you get a room there and that room is under your name, then you have the first opportunity or first right of refusal. Uh, it's, kind, it's kind of similar to San Diego, right? Because if you have a pass at San Diego, you get the opportunity to reinstall that pass for the next year. So it's kind of similar to that. That's kind of wild. Yeah. 
Yeah, wow. but if you get to go, dude, seriously, if you get if you get the opportunity, just go. It's and yeah, it's amazing. It's it's on the bucket list. Like there's yeah, there's me me being you you know who I am and like I love to talk to people and interview people and the the amount of people that I would love to uh, have a chat with or even get the opportunity to interview that attend Dragon Con on a regular basis is like that's that's half my like all star roster list right there. <laughs> some of them some of them like is extremely well known and some of them I might even just meet while there. Like yeah. it, it is. It is something that I do hope to experience for myself in the future. I hope so. I really hope so. It's so much fun. Speaking of experiencing things and creating things, uh, the the world it has I, I been, I think, just spoiled with Star Wars content as Disney and uh, LucasArts and everyone in that realm, in that industry, in that business has been putting out, in my opinion, incredible incredible content adding to the lore and uh steve mostly you but i i firmly believe ali you probably had a hand or two in this as well but Bucketheads, a uh a yeah. a great product that came out recently that i don't think gets enough attention uh it's it's so it's so weird yeah i, th I think we all feel the same way anyone that's been involved with it feels the same way it's a fan film yeah it's hard to get out there and do major promotion for fan film you have to rely on social media and networking and getting the name out there but the guys were actually just in town for lacc they've been they're, they're what we have so far or what they have so far for bucketheads up to chapter two of this you know very very high quality, super budget with no budget mm -hmm. uh, quality of stuff coming out. They got they did a tour with a, I think it was called Geek Fest. Yes. Um, Geek Fest were touring around, uh, playing fan films, and they were on the list of fan films. So they were just in town a few weeks back for uh, LA Comic Con, and it was great to see the responses still out there from people, and they're taking home awards still and prizes still, and. and I think it's so well deserved. It's, um, I think you're right. I don't think there's enough exposure of it. Mm. Um, but cutting back to what you said about being spoiled, and I, I think that's a major part of it. It's just people don't have to wait for anything nowadays. You know, when you grow up in the dark times of absolutely zero content, yeah. you know, <laughs> and then you got prequels and then silence again, there was nothing being made. Yeah. And you, you were just grateful for something that came out right but now it's every month we've got something else that's to do with the law of star wars and people have become impatient yeah you know and picky and picky, picky. really picky it's yeah. like dude like god damn calm just be down happy. yeah be happy you got content <laughs> but again with bucketheads being uh, uh, a non-profit volunteer-based um, production uh, every single part of that show if you get to watch it every single part of it is from somebody donating time mm. donating parts donating their talents including the actors the the guys behind the scenes doing all the cg everyone's doing this on their own time and mm. that takes time so you can imagine that if somebody enjoys content which people truly do enjoy this content if they have to wait they get impatient and they don't wait yeah but when it comes out again they'll be all over it, i'm sure but yeah, 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 yeah. it's it is hard to get the word out about something when it's not, you know, steadily producing. I guess yeah. is the thing. But fingers crossed. Uh, you know, the, um, sometime rumor rumor mill was May. The last thing I heard, uh, they should be finishing chapter three, and they should be compiling a director's cut full episode, which will be out of watch from beginning to end. Yeah. So, it's super be excited. Like a movie length, isn't it? No, no, just no. a just a uh, an episode length. That's the crazy thing about it, dude. It's been like years to create 30 minutes, you know? 30 minutes, yeah. okay. Yeah. 30 or 40 minutes. Some, sometimes stuff like that, it takes time. Like, you know, yeah. scheduling and uh, accessibility to yeah. uh, locations or props or actors or, or anything of the sort. Like, sometimes it just takes time. But for the uninitiated, just give me the elevator pitch of what Bucketheads is. Uh, Bucketheads is like a... a, a a story based on the stormtrooper more than anything it's based on i know that uh if andy and marco were here they'd probably say the same thing 
what inspired them was telling the stormtrooper story. Not you know they're not we know they're not clones when they're you know, TKs. Mm. They're not clones, and we're learning that from the amazing work we're getting from the animation from Dave Filoni, right? And right. So they wanted to tell a story of a, a conscript, a, a person that signed up for the right reasons in their mind, and what they go through doing that. Because not everyone's out there because they hate the rebellion or whatever. They're serving what they think is order, and they wanted to portray that. They want to portray it from the side of the stormtrooper, and I think it's a pretty good way of looking at it, taking on this troop of... Uh, Nova Squad is the is the troop taking on Nova Squad's journey through uh, the end of the Battle of Endor to wherever it is we're going to end up with this story without ruining anything. So yeah. it's, it's so just, much I want to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wait, can I say that? No. Yeah. So, say that? No. <laughs> yeah. Get onto YouTube. Get onto YouTube for transmute pictures, and transmute pictures is where you'll find the Bucketheads content. Yeah, and uh, give it a watch. You know, even the trailer was blowing people out of the water when they first saw the trailer for it. Yeah, um, song. Yeah, the music that goes with it too. You know, they've had such great support from some really talented people. Yeah, um, absolutely. And like, like I it's said, it's definitely like it, worth a watch. Hopefully, it, you can put something up in your in the chat, which will be a link. Oh no, from, it's going to uh, be across the screen. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, we're all really super excited to see it, see it finish, and. Uh, yeah. and get out there yeah it's 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 it was such a privilege to be part of it and, yeah. and help put something towards it uh ali and like I, I i follow you on social media and i do know that yeah. uh when you do find the time you do these uh these uh guides and how to care with costumes and wigs specifically and i do like the fact that you know you take the time to not only help someone you know who may be struggling through or just trying to figure out how to take a straight hair wig to make it curly and make it stay uh but also like you share a lot of your own like and so i messed up this once time and this is what i learned from it like i do appreciate the fact that you take the time to do that sort of thing and stick it and like send it out there well, thank you yeah i i have created a different type of page it's a little bit more educational and journey of me there's a lot of beautiful cosplay pages out there that are more portfolio based and mine does have that educational element i've never really thought about it but yeah yeah it does <laughs> well like i don't i don't own any wigs but like i do like i do like i said yeah, i follow you i've been following you on social media for years of course you're my friend but still like the stuff that you teach and instruct is is informative like if if I ever really start to dip my toe back into the cosplay world, like I know that I can rely on you to be like a, a sort of a guiding light to really adding that extra touch to maybe something that I I could use or stuff like that. Like the fact that you take it upon yourself to create so much of your own work and redefine and then re you know reimagine yet again something that has been done but you're doing it your own way is still like it's it shows that you are passionate about what you do thank you yeah i've been a big believer that cosplaying needs to be driven by passion yeah because it's so much time it's so much effort it's sometimes so much money yeah. too that if you're not doing it because it excites you and you really love the character or the world or it's your childhood dream to be a Jedi or a stormtrooper or a mermaid or whatever it is. Ellen Ripley. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be driven by passion because that, that'll get you through all the ups and downs because. Yeah. You, it's the drive, right? That poor sewing machine has heard every curse word there's ever been. <laughs> <but> like, <laughs> yeah, if the only sewing machines could tell. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we pay if they could, they would need counselors. <laughs> Yeah, we, we like to sticker our sewing machines up. So we're always decorating our sewing machines. That's like a, instead of putting yeah. a penny in the swear jar, we put a beautiful sticker on the sewing machine to make it better. There you go. <laughs> penny. Does the penny still exist? Yeah, we got a whole jar of them. Okay. Yeah. I can't, I, I still, my piggy bank is right are. there, and I still have okay. pennies and nickels and quarters and dimes yeah. in there, so. <laughs> Never know when they'll come in handy. Yeah, that's exactly. It's interesting about the pa the passion thing too, because I, I don't know about you, and I don't know about you, but I found that late a while back the passion dropped. You know, after 
we all got out of the dark times there of, of COVID, the passion kind of dropped a bit. Mm. And it's right. If you're not feeling it, then you don't enjoy it. And we are definitely firm believers in if I don't want to make it, I'm not going to make it. Yeah. And so just because we're not making doesn't mean we're not interested in cosplay, but nothing's come along that's really floated our boat to make. Yeah. Um, mm. So what's the point of just making it if you don't want to own it? I don't want to. I don't want to sell my shit, and I don't want to give it away. So, you know, if I want to make it, I want to have it and wear it and enjoy it, no matter what it is. And it, yeah. for me, it needs to be a timeless character that you can do that with. Mm-hmm. Is what I find. That's what makes me. That's what gives me my passion. Time. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter when it came out. It doesn't matter how good everyone thinks it was. It's, a, it's got to be a character you got some passion about. Yeah. Because uh, then you don't mind wearing it, no matter when. Yeah. Yeah, we've worn some of our newer stuff that's more classic we've worn it to a couple conventions now and every single time it gets great feedback and we yeah. have a blast yeah. and that's what matters <laughs> we have fun yeah yeah uh, well, like yeah. every once in a while like even even myself and i'm sure anyone else could uh, feel the same way like you know something you're passionate about something you enjoy something you love something you essentially uh like myself do for free you know, but do it because I love it. Every once in a while, that passion does kind of fade. It tapers off. And, yeah. you know, I find for myself, it's those moments where I need to take a step back, maybe take a break and try to find a different way of approaching it because I don't want to give it up. It's just mm-hmm. whatever I may have been doing up until that point has just burnt me out. So, yeah looking at it from a different view or taking on a uh, different perspective and, or even just simply stepping back and taking a break can really help revitalize that energy into what it is that you are working towards or passionate about or don't want to ever give up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's also the people you meet too. Yeah. You know, you, you meet the right people, then they ignite that fire for you again. You know, and you just want to get together with those people. You want to do that convention with those people. And that's another thing which really keeps you going to finding the right people. Last year, uh, I asked uh, all of my guests one simple question and they all answered their own different ways. Uh, This year, I I want to do the same thing, but I'm going to ask a different question. Last year, the question was, what's one thing about you that no one knows simply because they just haven't asked? And I've gotten answers from a, a content creator who was also a, a champion square dancer, an adult film mm. star who has a uh, world-class cornbread recipe in her family, <laughs> like just wild <laughs> stuff like that. So for you guys, um, my question is, what was your first job? You go first. I believe the first job that okay. I... Oh, can, can we qualify this? Sure. Do you mean the first job you got paid any amount of money for yes. the first job you had. <laughs> yes. yes. The first job you had is a career that no. you could be on. So first job you got paid for. So so I, 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 can, I can qualify this. Uh, my first yeah. job I ever got paid to do was a pizza cook for a place called Panagopolis, okay. which is now Panago. Okay. Okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> I was an assistant craft counselor that traveled around with my mom, who is the main craft counselor, working for the summer camps for the city in St. Augustine, Florida. And we would go, not just St. Augustine, but around the northern, eastern part of Florida. And we would just do crafts with the kids for a couple hours at each camp. And we'd see that camp once a week. So we were all like on rotation. So I was a camp counselor specifically with crafts wow <laughs> which makes sense now yeah it does yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. all those crafts that i like make for my camps now because i do princess camp during the summer mm. with my business and i created last year 40 new crafts wow. it was nuts yeah so i have crafts for a few years now like i have to do craft creation creation stuff for a while now wow, wow. that's yeah. cool See? That's where it started. I, on the other hand, mm. <laughs> spent my first money making uh, to pay the bills job washing up at the local golf club in the restaurant and helping my brother put windows in to buildings, glazing. 
So that was how I earned my money, my play money. And that's why I'm so good at washing up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's true. Yeah, after that one, what was I? I was a ticket seller for a company that did guided carriage tours. They like with the horse and buggies and they would do um, during the day, beautiful little tours around the historic town I lived in. And mm. then in the evening we did ghost tours and I always wanted to be a tour guide, but I was always too young. <laughs> no one would follow me around graveyards. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been which a great would, idea. You could have been a... Into, I was going to say, which would lead into something someone doesn't know about someone as well. Ooh, yes. Yeah. But anyway. That was one of your unpaid not, jobs. That was one of my unpaid jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Ghost. <laughs> uh, so, you know, just, just to share and share alike, uh, yeah, I was a pizza cook for a company called Panagopolis, which they have now shortened to Panago. I can, I can make an Italian style pizza. I can flip the dough into the air. I can still do it. It's all muscle memory, but half my job was also prep cook. So I would also do the wash up. And because I was the youngest and newest person in the kitchen, my first duty every day before the shift was dicing all the white onions. Oh, oh so no. you're, you, you got your chopping skills down. Uh, I got my chopping skills down and I cried like a baby every fucking day. <laughs> it doesn't stop, right? doesn't matter how many you've done. Exactly, you're yeah. Crying. <laughs> you're a fast chopper or a slow chopper? I'm a, I'm a fast chopper now, but back then, man, ooh, it was tough. <laughs> yeah. Did you get the slap chop and just call it a day? This was 1994. <laughs> Slap chop wasn't around. Yeah. <laughs> it came out around early it came out because of this guy having to chop all the onions. He's like, I wish someone would make something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if only. <laughs> so uh, what is in store for both of you, if you don't mind sharing? And if you want to share and let people know uh, where to tune in or follow or anything of the such, this is where to do it. Gosh, we haven't even sat down to figure out what we're doing this we, year. We've recently, we've recently <laughs> spent, we spent our Christmas and New Year moving. So yes. Christmas, the week of Christmas, we packed everything. And then right up until now, we're not even finished. We've just been moving. So we have had no desire to do anything. Plus, we've got to set up a new workshop, new workstation and get our... But I think once we've done that, we're going to we're gonna hit it and we're going to definitely start going again i would say my next project is to finish my my other tk that i'm building so mm. i need to build a whole new set of armor i need to finish that i've got cob vanth i'm redoing a whole brand new cob vanth um everything started nothing's finished <laughs> and then this year my goal is to complete a jedi temple guard in order to have it ready for hopefully going to japan in 2025 so that's that's my main things that I want to get done. Nice. Yeah. Allie? Oh, gosh. I really, like, I, there's so many different areas of my life that I want to, like, achieve something in this year. And it's so hard to even, like, focus on that right now. Mm. <laughs> I really need to finish yeah. moving in. Yeah. Because I know I have, like, goals for my business and what I want to do and just simple little things that I think will unlock a lot without trying much more. I have a lot more digital products that I'm creating to sell to other business owners who do what I do. I have a really cute sweater dress that I need to finish up that is like patchwork and a really fun design. Homing skills, basically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have so I have five boxes of old costumes to sell. Holy. So if everyone wants to follow along, this will eventually be sold and at a reasonable price. Very cheap because I need them gone. And, I and where can space. people find you? You can find me on Instagram. <laughs> at only Alley Cat. <laughs> Please come and buy all my extra old costumes. Because <laughs> <laughs> one of my big goals for the year, too, is to use the fabrics that I have. Hmm. In this move process, I've reorganized all of my fabrics and have them beautifully on display now. And so they're all just asking to be made into something. Gotcha. So I think that'll be really fun to follow along and to be like, what can I make with what I have? Challenge, mm -hmm. challenge, let's go. I have patterns, I have 
um, patterning abilities of my own. I have so many notions and <laughs> little trims and all kinds of beautiful fabrics. I can make so much. What about um, the whole universe? Are you going to do that again this year? or? It is up in the air. I okay. have a beautiful design okay. that I would love to submit. The issue with that is that time and money. it's time and money. Right. So during the summer is a really busy time for my business. And last year was such a push to get done what I did. So if I did it again, it wouldn't be a two look thing. It'd be a one look okay. thing. That's that much is for sure. Okay. And I think I want to try and crowdfund it and see if I can get like the hotel Paid for and maybe some of my supplies because I, I just wish that they gave some kind of per diem mm. like something like to all their finalists it would help so much and yeah. it's i think holding a lot of beautiful talented designers back from entering because it's so expensive yeah it's essentially all or nothing yeah yeah we will be at wondercon that's our that will yes. be our first stop for the year cool. i'm actually running uh the 10k at disney this weekend so i signed up for that last year i think it'd be a great idea um my knees don't agree <laughs> but i will be i will be getting up at 4 30 in the morning on saturday and running the 10k through disneyland which i'm really looking forward to but we will be at wondercon so yes i should make something you should get on and make something hmm. figure that out <laughs> well when is that in the march yes okay Okay. Well, I, I mean, I'm looking forward to what comes next because you guys are always delightful and uh, always wonderful. And anytime there's a notification on my phone that you guys have released something new, either a short video or or something, it's just I'm always there. So uh, I appreciate you guys. Awesome. Spending some Thank time you. I appreciate that. You. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. you guys spending some time with me tonight. And um, I, I hope to see you guys in person sometime in the near future because it's been too long. Yeah, I would not. I'm not sure when we'll be back in BC or yeah, I'm not sure even Canada at this point. But he's got a bucket list filled with yeah, <laughs> yeah, all of yeah. yeah don't saying, don't on. don't don't rely on on you just coming to me. I could make my way down to you. Okay. I've been to LA you a few let times. Let us know in my life, so. any of those conventions you're coming to, and even if we're not going to them, we'll go to them because you're going to be there. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> even if you go to Disney, we'll come down there and see. You. That's a bucket list too. I, I am 44 years old, never been to Disney, need to fix that. Need I to fix, I need to fix it. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's no. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for making it to the end of this episode. Big thank you to you for watching or for listening or for checking out my website, themediajack.ca. There is where you can find other episodes, other content that I create, as well, a link to the Patreon where you can support my show, all my work, directly. Also, where you could submit ideas, suggestions, or maybe you want to ask a future guest a question. Patreon is where you can go for all of that and so much more, and also get a shout out, just like Red Wolf Dawn, our executive producer for this month. Big thank you to you once again, and check out themediajack.ca. The merch is there. You can get a really comfortable shirt like this, supporting the Media Jack or my partner, the Iron Bikini. Or maybe you just want to get yourself a good mug or a gym shirt or something else that tickles your fancy, themediajack.ca. Take care. <laughs>